All right, from my side, some visual thoughts then on what do you do uh, to make a small band effective. Again, for me, don't be over conservative as of the space you use on the field. I, like I said, I've seen a large number of smaller bands now gone super conservative where the interval is usually always two steps, you know, or we're just always in the middle of the field, always, and we never leave that little cube in the dead center of the field. And I'll t show you some tricks of the trades about doing that. So. You, don't, you want to use as much variety as you, as you can. And again, I, like I said, if, if this is my field, I've just seen so much now that this is where the whole drill takes place constantly, and I'm always looking in the dead center of the field. We can still be very effective with small bands going outside the 50. I think the thing that we want to be aware of when we do that is if, this, if I use my size of space, let's say I really don't want the band ever to extend collectively outside the 35-yard 30, you know, lines or 30 yards of space, that doesn't mean I, don't, I still can't take it and put it centered over on the 40, you know what I mean? It's just the amount of space I go wide is the concern, but it doesn't have to stay on the 50 to still be very effective, and you can. Granted, I'm gonna pull myself back towards the 50 when I want my major impact points because I want it to be centered as much as I can to get the tone, but there's no reason we still can't do some more legato passages or some down passages or transitional time that can get us out of the 50 for a while and then bring us back you know, with the smaller band. So I think that's one thing that we really want uh, to be careful of. Uh, I like to say, even for a big band or a small band, I still use this word, They're, I call it the hot zone. And that hot zone, and for a smaller band, would change than a bigger band. But when we're talking between 35s to for a smaller band, no more than the middle of the field, I call that the hot zone. When we're really trying to create something that's super, super dynamic, we've got to be near that hot zone or in that hot zone for it really to be effective. Does that make sense? It's funny how when we try to push those outside, those are just never as strong as they can. If you really watch the great designers, when they're really trying to put something down your throat and be dynamically effective, they're kind of always in that hot zone place. So again, like I said, I would really watch based on the size. When, we, when I did the Lancers, we knew we really never wanted to go outside a 35 to 35 width left to right. We knew we couldn't be very effective that way. Again, keeping the concept simple. Uh, I think, still think that's a huge area that we try to do with small bands. I don't know why any small band, like, like you know, 60 people or maybe 50 people and under, would ever try to tell a story. You're taking too many people away. Way too many people away. I'm actually writing for a band right now when I talked to them and we talked about a show idea and, and they gave me a, what they really wanted to do. They wanted to use three huge props and move them during the show that were almost like a 10 yards wide and you know, 10 by 10, and move them around when there were only 62 horns and eight color guard people. I said, who's going to move those? I said, you're going to bring in other people? He said, no, this is what we have. I said, well, then you're taking a third of the, of the participants out of the show. You know? So, like, why would you even want to consider doing that? But I think with the smaller bands, we could still come up with some cool concepts that are simple and make them work. But I think we get way carried away here thinking that's going to score us more points when it actually takes more points away. We need to be more, let's, let's entertain, let's, let's, let's come up with a great idea. And then again, just make sure the message is clear. Yeah, the, when he's talking about making sure that you have that variety that you need in terms of staging, and if you're primarily in the center of the field, if you do bring your band over to, say, like the 35-yard line, uh, keep them keep them tight, keep the, the environment, the sound environment going that way. Like, so if I pulled a small group over to, say, the, the 35 in a tight group, I would have the battery right, right here so that the sound is going this way. Same thing over here. Just making sure that, the, that you've got that variety and you're moving them and you're not just keeping them dead center, but that you're thinking about the sound. The sound travels this way no matter what. It's going to travel that way, unless the horns are facing in crazy different directions, right? So think about how the musicians are going to sound and how they're going to play together facing that, that direction. So. You touched on that a little bit. Horn angles, uh, should they always be at the drum major or press box or are we playing the sidelines? I, I think when they're marching, if you're going to be in between the 40s primarily or 35s, maybe, right? You're not going to be too spread out. I think flat to the sideline, 10% higher than level, yeah. normal. Yeah. And I, I think on arrivals with a small group, up to the center, just below the press box. 
the center just below the press box and get all the horns facing that angle. But I would not try to do that with, with a small group on the move, that, that whole thing of keeping, because you've opened up a visual can of worms that is ridiculously hard to clean. It's very difficult for drum corps who practice all summer, when, that usually once they get outside of a certain yard line, they start facing in, okay? And it takes sometimes all season to get that cleaned. Uh, and then you're gonna have horns sticking out of the texture. It's much easier to keep them all facing the front 10% higher than level. When they get to an arrival, everybody faces center just below the press box. Do you agree with that, John? The only thing that I'd, I'd alter on that slightly when we were small, um, that you can get away with the bigger band that we couldn't. Basically, if we were within the 45s, we were straight ahead. Once we started to get outside the 45, our angles to the drum major started moving away. Because now if you think about it, if I start getting outside the five and I'm playing the drum major, I'm actually almost playing outside the press box now by the time it gets upstairs. Are you following me? So with a small band, we were, we were really talking about slight. Now, if I go outside the 45, I'm slightly outside the drum majors. You know what I mean? So the further we got out, the angles switched depending where they were. Because like I said, you end up playing across the press box. So That's very difficult to clean. Yeah. yeah. But with smaller numbers, actually, it worked well for yeah. us. You know, we could really, and the kids really started to understand what we wanted. You know, when we, they, it just became natural. After we did it for a while, they got it. They're like, oh, yeah, here's, here's what I need. You know. So I won't want to do that with a big group, but you don't have to worry about it because you're still going to get the sound there anyway. It was worth the time that we spent to do that. You know, to, like I said, after a while, if you did about the first five or six sets, they knew. Right. They knew how to take care of it themselves after we addressed it. Yeah.